Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this church, to be able to come to this church and to worship you openly and freely. Father, we just thank you for the word that gives us freedom, because your word gives us liberty, Father. And we just thank you for this topic of prayer, Father, that we dive in deeper. Not just tap our toes in the water, but we actually just jump in with it. We, we read your word and we use your word as we pray, Father, to grow us and to mature us. And we just praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, we are on the same topic we have been for the last few weeks. It's been an assignment given um, by my pastor, Pastor Cheryl, and God. So we are on the topic of prayer. I don't think we can really talk enough about prayer because when I look at George Barna and the statistics on prayer, we don't pray hardly at all. When they, when they ask people, well, do you pray out loud? Only 2% of churches actually pray out loud in a congregational setting. 2%. That's kind of sad. Now, in, I gave you a statistic, I don't know, a few weeks ago about how many prayers are actually in the Bible. There's like 650. Now, out of those 650 prayers, which may not have needed an answer, out of those, 450 were actually answered. Because some of those prayers were just, they were just praying to God. They didn't need an answer. They were just praying to God. So, again, I don't know about you all, but one of the prayers that I had for many years, and I didn't even cause this issue because I wasn't born yet, but we're, this is day 366 of Roe versus Wade being overturned. I don't know if you guys remember that or not, but just so you know, since that's been overturned, we've had 200,000 more people added to our census that most notably would not have been there if that would not have been taken care of. Um, so I thank God for that. I mean, this is day 366. Yeah. So, I mean, my kids, I mean, they're pretty young still. Of course, they're sitting in the front row. But, but again, these are, my kids are post-row kids. Yeah. I'm actually a post-row kid. That, I mean, that's pretty amazing to go through that. But just because that law got changed and some other things got changed in certain states and things like that, they figure about 200,000 people. That, that's just a guesstimate. They're not totally sure. But that's how many people are alive today because of that. That is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, so, yeah, I don't even know where to go from that one. That, that, that just, when I read that again this morning, because I've been reading about uh, Roe versus Wade, the different changes and different things. Just, it's nice having life. Yes, it is. You know, our TV shows that we watch, you know, constantly on TV are all about death. It's the only thing that sells. You know, murder mystery that, death this. I mean, just, it's always about death. And it's so nice to hear something about life. Amen. Because God came to give us life, right? And not just that, he came us to give us life more abundantly too as well. So just not to just be breathing, but to have so much more, so much more. And that's Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things are added. All these things are added. You don't have to go work for it, search for it, beg for it or anything like that. It just comes right alongside you and, and walks with you as you go do your purpose, your ministry, and those types of things. So, but again, we're talking about prayer. So I've given you some keys, and I left my big keys on my desk, which I don't need. But we've been talking about keys, and one of the biggest keys is, what is prayer? Prayer is just communicating between you and God. Just talking. Just talking. It's intimate fellowship with our Heavenly Father. And that's a lot of thing, or a lot of, a lot of what we don't do these days is communicate. We have all these wonderful gadgets and things, cell phones, iPads. Um, Tom was just showing me this wonderful new gadget he's got. It looks like an actual piece of paper, but it's digital. So I'm not going to give any advertising to the people that made it, but it's it it looks like you know, I don't know, kind of a laptop or something smaller than that. But it legitly looks like a piece of paper. And you can write on it just like it's a piece of paper. And you can erase it almost like it's a piece of paper. Yeah, it's, it's totally amazing. And it's, it's all digital. But again, this is where we need to get to the point is we need to put that stuff away. 
Now, that's not anything against Tom. That was really cool because he actually had the Bible pulled up on it, Romans something or other, right? And, and again, technology is there for a purpose, but there's also a bad side to technology. But even technology today, we have, you know, what? Where we can text each other. But a lot of times that does not convey emotion. The only time it really conveys emotion was when it's all in caps. <laughs> and then you think, well, they're yelling at me. <laughs> you know, my feelings are hurt now and, and, and all these things. But prayer is, is communicating with God. It's such a wonderful thing. And this is why the Bible also says pray without ceasing. Well, how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, I remember Smith Wigglesworth was asked a question one time by a reporter. The reporter just point blank asked him, so how, how much time do you spend praying? Well, I mean, I, I don't spend any more time than 15 minutes. And then he was quiet. And the reporter was stunned by that. Because if you know Smith Wigglesworth and all the amazing things he's done and kicked babies and pulled people out of caskets and thrown them against the wall a bunch of times and then they come alive, the baby came alive. I mean, all this stuff. The reporter was kind of stunned. But then he also followed up with this after that moment of silence. He said, but I don't go 15 minutes without praying. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And this is, this is where I want our church, this, this four walls and beyond, to become a church of prayer. That's where the power's at. That's where Catherine Kuhlman would stand on the stage. And people would say she, she would not even really have her feet on the stage because under the stage were all the people weeping and praying for a move of God. That's why she couldn't stand on the stage. <laughs> yeah, it was all the prayer warriors underneath, underneath the stage. Now we can't have people under the stage. It's kind of against fire code, if will. Um, but we can have people praying other places. And again, with healing school that's every Wednesday for this whole summer from Pastor Cheryl, healing school, whether you're healed or not, you should still be here. Because right. either you need healing or you need preventative maintenance. That's right. Because what is, what is the saying? You can't build your house during a hurricane. You just can't. And I love fail videos. And I love it when I see those guys pulling those big uh, sheets of plywood. And they're being blown all over the place. And the people who are taking the video are laughing because they're in some building, you know, where they're protected. But they're just, you know, laughing about the person down there trying to build something in a wind. And it, it, it's just not possible. This is why... You know, you need the preventative maintenance. This is why you need to be in prayer with God because the Holy Ghost will reveal things, just what might happen in the future. Like, hey, don't take that route. Don't go that road. Avoid that stop, you know, that, that crossing area. Well, but I always go that way, but I don't want you to go that way. I want you to go this way and see if you're in tune with the Holy Ghost, you're going to avoid some pitfalls. Because what, what is human nature to do when we go into pitfalls? we like, God, why'd you do this to me? <laughs> you know, and he's a loving father. He's going to say, hey, you know, I, it's okay. I've got you. I've got you. So um, let's, uh, I'm going to have you turn over to John 15, verse 7. And I'm just going to keep talking your ear while I hear pages turning um, and those types of things. But again, prayer, I just want to tell a little bit of a story. And, and don't think anybody in this room or those watching on the camera that this is geared towards them because when I'm up here preaching, it's really, I'm, I'm preaching to myself and you just get to hear me out loud. So let me just tell you a little story. So let's say a husband and wife are sitting at home. It's in the evening. They've got their tea, their crumpets or whatever else, and they're watching TV. Um, and it's late. It's dark outside and they're about to get ready for bed. So they go, they turn off the lights you know, they make sure everything's locked up. They make sure all the food is put away and the dishes are cleaned up and the pillows are correctly on the couch. This is our run down here. So, and it's not just one pillow. It's a lot of pillows. Okay. So, um, so anyway, so you got all that stuff straightened up. You made sure everything's checked and everything's good. Close the blinds. You go in your room and you get ready for bed, right? And then, you know, um, you make sure the AC is down, which you can do that on your phone these days, right? So um, you do that on your phone, and you're crawling into bed, and you pull the covers up, and you're right in that kind of twilight sleep, and then your wife takes and whap, 
whaps you. And you're like, what? Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear that. <laughs> That's a normal response. Did you hear the baby crying? No. Didn't hear the baby crying whatsoever. So anyway, you, you hear, she taps you to wake you up and says, there's a noise. It's an unusual noise. Could you go check on it? Right? So you go, you, yeah, you go, you open the door, and you're like, so where's the noise from? I mean, what, what kind of noise is it? Right? And here it is. It's an intruder in your home. It's an intruder in your home. Well, I, <laughs> I'm not going to say, well, I'll grab something, okay? Um, there's an intruder in your home. So you're yelling and you're screaming at the intruder, and then they hear silence, and it's, right, okay? Because that would be in my house. So, again, and then the intruder is like, well, you know, wanting to f- grab stuff and make a mess, and then finally runs out of the house. So why is it when we come to prayer, men, we let our spouses fight a more evil intruder? Comes in your house, um, something with health or sickness or money, right? And we we turn cowering to our wives and say, could you pray? (laughs) Because Satan's in your house trying to destroy and mess up stuff, and he has no right to be in there. But then you, you default to her. Yeah. Wow, quiet in here. <laughs> we default to our spouse and say, well, you pray him out. But yet, five minutes ago, you, or two minutes ago, when I was telling you the story, you would have been all, all ready, fighting, holding up your pajama bottoms and everything else, ready to fight this person, Right? And yet, when a more evil person comes in your home to destroy, disrupt, those types of things, we default to our spouse and say, you pray. See, and that's not correct, man. And again, I'm preaching to myself, so don't don't think that I'm just talking to the men in this room. But why do we do that, guys? We have all, we have everything we need to pray against the enemy right here. And yet we don't do it. All we have to do is repeat the words. What's that? uh, uh, Somebody broke into this lady's house. A guy broke into a lady's house. And while the ordeal was done, okay, the guy was already in handcuffs. And the police officer asked, well, why did you give up so quickly? Because she kept screaming, Acts 238. I thought she had two axes or an axe and two 38s. And really it was, you need to repent, get out of my house. But he thought she had an axe in 238. So, he... But that's using the word, is it not? Even if that's the only thing you can get out of your mouth. Acts 238! <laughs> right? But again, again, prayer is so vital today. It, you know, I ride a Harley. So naturally, naturally, this has become naturally because my... The people I roll with did this. So I, I created this habit. Before I get, well, I get on there, and I'm like, I grin from ear to ear, okay? And then I fire it up. And I can't grin anymore. kind of hurts the mouth, but I grin some more, right? And then as I'm backing out, I'm like, okay, I plead the blood of Jesus over me. I, Lord, keep my path straight. Any weapon formed against me shall not prosper as I'm on these two wheels. And yada, yada, yada as it goes. That's habit. Because when you're on two wheels, there's not a door (laughs) or a console or a bumper or a bumper in front or back or a roof. So, So again, you've got to get to the point where prayer first, not prayer, oh my gosh, we should pray. Well, everything's destroyed or gone and it's resorted to, let's pray. No, you should have done that way before. And again, this is where where we got to understand... uh, the word, we got to speak the word. That's really what we're doing. It's that double-edged sword. We're just repeating what God has said in this and given to us in this. So it doesn't have to be anything, guys, like, oh, I should go write down my prayer. Go ahead, write down scripture. Just start repeating the scripture. Do that. Do that. 
And then the Holy Ghost will give you other words to say. Don't be embarrassed by it. We all got to start somewhere, right? I don't think I had training wheels on my bike. Did I, Dad? I don't think I did. Dad just shoved me down the hill and hope I balanced and made it, you know? And, well, it was kind of a hill. And then it went around a circle. So depending on the speed he pushed you at, you could make it quite around the, a little bit. But I got so, so upset about that because I didn't get it right away. I didn't get it right away. Sister got it. Brother got it. My mom got it. My dad got it. I couldn't get it. So I threw the bike down. I said, I'm done. So for three years, I, I, almost three years, I didn't, I didn't ride a bike again. I wanted to. I looked at it. I'm like, God, I wish I could ride you. I have no balance. <laughs> I can't figure out the pedals, you know? And so I threw it down. I said, I'm not going to do this anymore. And then it took, again, three years. And I finally got it. I'm like, man, I wish I would have done this three years ago. But again, once you apply yourself to it, it's like praying in the Holy Ghost. You might get one word, but that one word is powerful because there's no, it's between you and God. It's through the Holy Ghost. There's power in that one word. Yell dynamite sometime. See what happens. Or fire. See what happens. So that one word in the Holy Ghost is very powerful. Very, very powerful. All right, so John 15, 7 says to this, or says this to us, I should say that. Um, again, all right, here we go. So John 15, 7 says this, if, if, ooh, if, if my words remain in you and continue to live in your hearts, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. Now, that ask whatever you will is actually a Greek word, and I, it's in my Bible, and it's kind of chicken scratch for all that we're here early. But that, that word, ask, is actually the word demand. It's actually spelled A-I-T-E-O, ateo, or however you want to say that in the Greek. But actually, that word means demand. You're a king's kid, right? Right? You all are quiet in here. It's okay. So if, if, if the word is in you, Hopefully it is in you. Say it's in me. All right, it's in you. My words remain in you and continue to live in your hearts. Demand whatever you will and it shall be done for you. Why? Because you're not asking what you want. You're asking according to the word. You're asking according to this. This isn't wrong. Oh, sorry. A bunch of stuff falls out. This isn't wrong. But if you ask out of his will or out of this, not out of this word, you ask on your own accord, you know, God's going to be like, yeah, you know, you didn't ask according to my word. But if you demand and ask whatever you will according to his word, I'll, I'll, def I'll give it to you. Now, there could be a time period between that because you don't give the keys to the car to a five-year-old, do you? Right? Now, I grew up on a farm, so... We, I mean, driving a lawnmower at eight or nine years old was, that's a piece of cake. Driving a stick shift, that took a little bit longer, but I got it. My dad had neck injuries, but <laughs> we got it, right, Dad? We got it. So um, it took a little bit longer. But again, if you want to become a helicopter pilot, you don't fly a helicopter for like the first two years. So again, don't look at shortcomings as, eh. Preparation time is never wasted time. Pastor Steve taught me that years and years ago. Preparation time is never wasted time. Now, whatever you practice does make permanent. So you've got to make sure what you're practicing is correct. Because if you're practicing a free throw shot like this, okay, and you're going to play in the NBA, yeah, you're going to learn the wrong way, and you're going to have to relearn muscle memory, relearn it to throw it the right way. So again, what you practice will become even better and greater. So guys, don't think like, oh my gosh, I only said one scripture and the prayer lasted for 15 seconds. It's okay. It's okay. You, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. And small is okay. You were small once, right? You're all born at an early age. <laughs> you didn't come out this size. Thank your moms. All right. So, uh, also, God does not forget his word. He wants to bring it, he wants it coming back to him out of your mouth. 
when you were a kid and your parents said, we're going to go do this, what did you say a couple hours later or even a day later? When are we going? When are we going? You said we're going to go. You said we're going to do this. That's a Bible principle. That didn't just happen to all kids. It didn't come in the manual with kids. God taught us that. That's the way we need to be with God. Does God need remembrance? No, but we do. <laughs> we do. We need remembrance all the time. God, I'm believing you for this. God, I, your word says that I can have this. I can have abundance. Your word says that. I'm believing for that. That's what your word says. Show me. <laughs> right? Show me. You said peace that passes all understanding can be mine. I need it. And then this is the words he says, trust me. <laughs> you know, trust me. I'm like, okay, Lord, that's a hard one. Can we come back to that? Because there was a time when we had a situation at home where I literally, I had to learn what trust was. Because I thought I could fix. I thought I could do it. I thought I could, I could work this out. I couldn't. And this is where God and I had the, the talk. Well, if you want peace, then you got to trust me. Yeah, but the, the storm is raging. Have you seen the bills? <laughs> have, have you seen that? Have you seen the hours now at work that they want me to do because now they want to have meetings after school, right? I mean, have you seen this? Trust me. Okay, Lord. Yeah, it, it, again, 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 again. He wants it to come back to him out of your mouth. All right, Proverbs 20, verse 5. Let's turn over to there. Proverbs 20, verse 5. Are you guys getting anything out of this? Yeah. Please say you are, because if not, I am. All right, so Proverbs 20, verse 5, it says this. says a man of understanding. So uh, let me turn over, actually. Let's, let's actually get Proverbs 20, verse 5. Proverbs 20, verse 5, and it says this. That's kind of a shortened version up there on the wall. Um, so Proverbs 20, verse 5, and it says this, counsel, um, oh, counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Has anybody ever slept on a waterbed? I used to have one in high school. Loved that thing. Had the baffles in it, so, but my buddies would come in and wake me up. Oh, my gosh, it'd be like, <laughs> you know, and then it would finally settle down, right? Okay. But in deep water, that wouldn't happen. Because it's so deep. I mean, you could throw a rock in it in deep water and it would make a ripple on the top, but the deep wouldn't even feel it, right? So again, what it's stating here is um, counsel in the heart of men. In other words, asking, I need help. Ooh, that's a, that's a thing right there men have a hard time with. I need help. Anybody ever been to Home Depot with me? Some of you in this room have. I have no problem going and finding somebody in orange and saying, where is it? <laughs> and then my wife said, from the front, and they usually don't know. But, you know, I'll find somebody. But usually I, I want to ask because I don't want to walk around the whole store because it smells like, like buy. It, it smells like your brain is telling you to buy stuff. And that's not good for me, okay? Car's not big enough. So... Um, there's so many tools and so little time. But, but again, I just ask. It's okay to ask. It's okay to pull into a gas station and say, hey, I'm lost. Where is this place? And first, there'll probably be a shock look. A man is asking me where to go. Yeah, it is like that. But that's what prayer does. God, I can't do this under my own ability. And God will tell me, and he has told me, I never designed you to do that under your own ability. Right. That's why you need me, son. I'm like, yes, sir. Well, I need help. And then he'd follow up with this at the end of our conversation. Trust me. <laughs> I'm like, you keep saying it. Yeah, because you haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm working on this. I'm working on this. So trust, but prayer, and this is where it's easier for ladies to do or to pray to God is because they can do that trust thing. They trust you as a husband knowing you're going to fill the fridge with food. 
or bring money home so they can fill it with food, right? But, but they trust you. And they don't know what you do most of, the, most of the day. They know what kind of stuff you might do, but they trust you're coming home. They trust you're going to love them. They trust you're going to love their kids, right? And it's so much easier for guys. We always want to question this or question that. We never want to ask that four-letter word, help. Ooh, because that makes you less of a man. No, it doesn't. It does not. All right. Wow. don't know why I said all that. So anyway, it goes on to here um, to say in that verse, it says, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Well, where do we draw it out from? Where do we draw it out from? The Holy Ghost. Yes, we get it from the Word, but we draw it out from the Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Ghost makes us look way better than we really are. I can say that for the years of teaching that I did, and I've somewhat stepped out of that, is, is a teacher, the Holy Ghost made me look good as a teacher. My students would say that all the time. You're, you're our favorite teacher, you're the best, this, that, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, but if I didn't have the Holy Ghost, you wouldn't like me as a teacher. <laughs> right? And they, they look at me with bewilderment of why. But that's, that's where I rely on. on. It, it's not my own understanding. Because if you've ever been in my garage when I'm working on something and I don't ask the Holy Ghost, it, it's a big mess. It, it, it's a big mess. And so then it's like, okay, i got to sit down. i gotta, I got to pray because i got to figure this thing out in this, this car. And the Holy Ghost knows. Or any situation. Guys, have you ever asked those that are married in here, help me figure out my wife? <laughs> you know, what would she love today? You know, it's usually something pretty simple, you know, right? Flowers, Milky Way, something, something simple. But we try to make it this elaborate thing, and really, you don't need to do that, guys. Hey, when's the last time you told her you loved her? It's simple. See, this is the wonderful thing about this word. This word was written to children. Children understand this. And we get so adultish that we don't even understand it anymore. We, 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 we try to theologize and eh, all this big worded stuff and go this way and that way. And really all we need to do is say, Holy Ghost, just teach me. Show me. Instruct me. I want to learn. And this is where prayer, t- prayer takes you. Prayer takes you to that secret place. See, intimacy, intimacy with God will take the intimidation out of man. This is where we need to get intimate with God. So we don't look at man's face and, and get scared. We can look at man's face or woman's face and go, I love you. I'm here to help. How can I help? The Holy Ghost wants me to help you. That's what we need to get to. And prayer does that. I just talked to somebody this last week. Somebody was in their office crying. Or they made them cry. Whichever one. I'm not sure which. But anyway, this person was crying. And they had nothing. But they prayed in the Holy Ghost the day before or the morning of, and after a little while, the Holy Ghost turned the whole situation around and gave them the answer. And then they gave that person the answer. See, that's what we are. We're the answer. We have Jesus in us. We, we are the answer to that person. We're the Jesus they might only see that day. And this is where prayer takes you. So if you have to get in, I, I know, I see it, Herb. It, when you get into your prayer closet or your private place, You need to do it. For your life's sake, you need to do it. You need to go into that secret place. Shut the door. I have two doors to shut before I get in my private place. It's a laundry room door and then the garage door. That's my secret place. This is the, we've got to, we live in perilous times today. And if you want to unlock some certain things in your life, you've got to go to prayer. And it's just say, hi, God. I'm here today. I just want to give you thanks. And just start from there. And sometimes he'll tell you, you need to be quiet and just listen. (laughs) Yes, sir. (laughs) And sometimes it's just praying in the Holy Ghost because you don't know what words to even pray. We need to pray more in the Holy Ghost than Paul did. Can we do that? We really need to do that. 
give Paul a run for his money. When we see him in heaven, he's like, yeah, you prayed more than I did in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that would be a great thing to hear from Paul, right? Because he said, I pray Holy Ghost more than y'all do. Yeah. So again, we're going to continue on with this prayer. Uh, this, we're in this vein of prayer right at the moment. Um, but again, we got healing school on Wednesdays. And I, I tell you what, you don't want to miss that. Even if you got a little ache, bring it and leave it. Okay? Bring it and leave it. All right? Premeditative, or uh, uh, what is it? Pre, uh, premeditative medicine, yeah, is the Holy Ghost. It, well, it's, it's this. It's the gospel, right? All right. Father, we just thank you for your word today. Father, we just thank you that you are Lord of our lives. Lord, we just, well, I just ask the Holy Ghost to go and prick everyone in this room and everybody listening by the camera to want to go deeper and be pulled in to the intimacy with God today, Father. And not just today, but every day of the week. Father, we just thank you. We don't, we don't just honor you on Wednesdays and Sundays, but any, any day that ends in day, we do, Father. We just thank you and we praise you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.